Hello ladies and gentlemen welcome to Triple N Media I am Dr Nick Nickam I have been a cardiologist in the Houston area for more than 40 years the focus of this presentation is on ACC AHA 2019 focused update on atrial fibrillation and acute coronary syndrome anticoagulation considerations so let us continue with the focus presentation here's the reference to the article i am talking about the 2019 aha acc hrs focus update from 2014 with reference to atrial fibrillation in patients with acute coronary syndrome and many other situations you can download a pdf copy of this by just googling this title in a clinical setting we may have a patient who presents with acute coronary syndrome who may already have an existing atrial fibrillation or on the other hand the patient comes with an acute coronary syndrome then develops atrial fibrillation during the course of the hospital in this situation we face many challenges and i'm going to address all of these challenges in this presentation new or old atrial fibrillation in patients with acute coronary syndrome with or without heart failure the need for dual antiplatelet agents for stents the need for anticoagulation for atrial fibrillation and how do we combine these two and if we decide to keep them on triple therapy what agents are we going to prefer and how long do we need to keep them on triple therapy and we're going to look at different anticoagulants that are available to treat patients with atrial fibrillation and finally we're going to talk about uh, rate and rhythm control of atrial fibrillation in the presence of an acute coronary syndrome so let us begin with these recommendations these are all text but uh, i have kind of highlighted these text uh, so i try to make this as simple as possible so that at the end of this presentation you will know where to find the resources uh, if you have a question and what recommendations are done by the ACCAHA for patients with atrial fibrillation and acute coronary syndrome for patients with acute coronary syndrome and atrial fibrillation we already know there's an increased risk of thromboembolism based on the chad vas 2 score and anticoagulation is recommended unless uh, bleeding risk exceeds expected benefit so most of these patients are on anticoagulants we know that one if the patient were to develop a new onset atrial fibrillation in the hospital during the course of an acute coronary syndrome urgent direct current cardioversion can be considered in patients with hemodynamic compromise ongoing ischemia or inadequate rate control we have an option to do direct cardioversion based on these requirements intravenous beta blockers are recommended to slow the heart rate in patients with the rapid ventricular response with one condition that these patients do not have heart failure hemodynamic instability or bronchospasm this is a class 1 indication with the randomized trials class 1b indication this one is cl- class 1c indication and this is also one class c indication and now we're going to go into class 2a indications if triple therapy is recommended even for a short duration it is reasonable to choose clopidogrel in preference to prasugrel because prasugrel has increased chances of bleeding the next one is in patients with atrial fibrillation at increased risk of stroke who have undergone pci with stent double therapy with the p2y12 inhibitor preferably clopidogrel or ticagrelor and dose adjusted vitamin k antagonist is reasonable let's move on to the next one the next one is 2a indication and in patients with atrial fibrillation low dose rivaroxaban 15 mg daily is reasonable to reduce the risk of bleeding as compared with triple therapy we have a choice of vitamin k antagonists or low dose rivaroxaban and the next one deals with uh, dabigatran and this is also a 2a indication in patients uh, with atrial fibrillation and pci we can use a double therapy with the p2y12 inhibitor 
preferably clopridogrel along with the dagabitran 150 mg twice daily. The next one is a 2B indication if triple therapy is required or necessary because of a CHADVAS score of 2 or greater the triple therapy should be restricted to 4 to 6 weeks because it is the first 4 to 6 weeks during which time the strength thrombosis is the highest and we can use dual antiplatelet agents alone even in patients with acute coronary syndrome and atrial fibrillation if their chad vas 2 score is 0 or 1. So this is an important point to keep in mind because I don't know how many patients will have a score of 0 or 1. And finally, we have a 2B indication. Administration of amiodarone or digoxin may be considered to slow rapid ventricular response in patients with acute coronary syndrome and atrial fibrillation associated with severe LV dysfunction, heart failure, or hemodynamic instability. So if you have a patient with acute coronary syndrome who needs dual antiplatelet agents and then a patient has atrial fibrillation with rapid ventricular response, uh, we can use IV amiodarone or digoxin. There's a caution about digoxin. I think it comes in the next. As far as digoxin is concerned, the studies have not shown to show significant benefit in patients with heart failure. In fact, there are some studies which show there may be increased mortality. It can be used for a short duration of time just to control the rate until such time we can get these patients on beta blockers or like as it says here, calcium channel blockers may be considered administration of non-dihydropyridine with the exception of uh, drugs like uh, Procardia which increases the heart rate. We can use uh, calcium channel blockers like uh, diltazam or verapamil to slow the rapid ventricular response but we need to keep in mind they have the same contraindications as those for beta blockers in terms of uh, decompensated heart failure or patients with conduction disturbances. Now what do we do about we have a patient who is in the hospital for acute coronary syndrome and now develops a new onset atrial fibrillation. The choices we have are cardioversion. They can be treated with IV beta blockers in the absence of uh, clinical heart failure. And we talked about IV amiodarone for rate control. And sometimes this new onset atrial fibrillation may actually revert back to sinus rhythm. And so the rhythm control is possible with IV amiodarone. Digoxin, digoxin in patients with heart failure had mixed results with higher mortality, as I already mentioned, but it can only be used for a short duration of time if we don't have other choices. And of course, we can use ACE inhibitors for patients with LV dysfunction. So ladies and gentlemen, this is a very quick synopsis of the ACC AHA 2019 focused update on the role of uh, antiplatelet agents and anticoagulants in patients with uh, acute coronary syndrome and atrial fibrillation. It doesn't matter which one comes first, but uh, the guidelines clearly spell out what are the options that are available to us. Thank you so much for watching this presentation. I have a series of presentations on ACC AHA guidelines on variety of topics. Please do watch them and please do subscribe to our YouTube channel and I will see you in the next presentation.